from now on, we will be doing everything hands-on. So what I would recommend is if you have two monitors or if you have a monitor, you have the video running on one half and on the other half uh, open Tinkercad and if you wanted to execute it in real time so you can or like in a real hardware you can have uh, the Arduino Uno connected to the computer and also have a breadboard nearby and the kit nearby so that you can do simple circuits if you have to so we are going to get started with serial communication so that is our first um, important task we have to communicate with the board again like when i say communication i'm not talking about programming the board like we'll be using serial communication for that but again that happens in the background but when i say serial communication here i wanted to speak with the board when it is actually working when it is executing the program so how do i communicate with that so to learn uh, how uh, the serial communication works early on we used to have something called parallel communication so if you wanted to send one digit of binary then like you need one pin for that so if you're sending uh, zero or one you need like a switch and you need to connect to a pin and you just turn it on or turn it off two bits two uh, two switches three bits, three switches. Likewise, you need like say number of switches um, to turn on, turn off and send information. But in serial communication, we are just using one line or like one switch. <clears throat> but what we do is like we turn on and turn off in a um, particular frequency. So let's say if um, I wanted to send some information. So my uh, communication is hap happening at like one Hertz, means like one cycle per second, means uh, if I am a, I am the Arduino and I'm sending information to a sensor and we, we talk to each other in a one hertz frequency. So every second I will feed on or like change the information. So if I wanted to change, uh, send one zero one zero. So for the first second, I will turn it on for the second second, I will turn it off. And for the third second, I will turn it on and fourth second, I will turn it off. So the most important thing is both of you should know that like we are talking in one hertz frequency and if we know that then we can easily decode that information and um, um, kind of do something based on that so that's the most important thing here and so to get started with serial communication there are like few system functions so one is serial begin and this is the initialization process so we again as we said we have to establish the communication and say at what frequency we are going to talk. So here, that is indicated by the bar rate. Bar rate is the rate at which the information is uh, transferred. So often for some reason, like I used like 9,600 bits per second for some reason, again, like you can use a lot of different uh, other uh, frequencies. So we will see that soon, but like that's what I often use. Um, I don't know why though. Uh, and uh, so yeah maybe because like some most of the sensors like use that frequency to communicate so that is the reason <laughs> i should not say that i don't know that uh, but like that is why even if where i have i have the flexibility of choosing the bar rate i just go with that and uh, we have something called serial available so what happens when uh, this dialogue is going on and again when this is a dialogue it's like i said i used one pin to transfer information to the sensor but if the sensor or like if the audio um, if the sensor wants to talk with me the arduino it also needs a dedicated line for that so we'll have two uh, lines or like two wires connecting um, the sensor and arduino one is to send so that is called the transmit pin and then one is to receive information so that is called the receive pin so rxtx that's what we were talking about early on and these pins are connected to something called a buffer so buffer is um, a memory space which is allocated or which is dedicated for serial communication so in this case it is 64 bytes so every time you send some information it is stored in there so um, 
when you use this function serial available so what happens is it uh, goes to the serial buffer and sees how much uh, information is stored like how many bytes of information is stored in uh, the serial uh, in the serial buffer and it returns back that and that is this function and serial println is let's say i send something to um, uh, a sensor and the sensor wants to talk back or like in this case if the Arduino wants to talk back, if I am the sensor and if I'm uh, sending or requesting some information from Arduino, like, and uh, the Arduino can print uh, back uh, using serial println, that we will be reading with a serial monitor function. So that's another function that is available. So we are just going to use these three functions and do some communication here. So let me bring in the Arduino Uno. So again, as soon as you bring in Arduino Uno, so we have this code function and we will always use text because it is easier to just copy that and paste it in Arduino Uno and like say, or Arduino IDE and then like upload it to Arduino Uno. So that's why we will be using this um, for some reason. Oh wow, okay. so. For some reason like the computer froze um, so let's see um, now we have a default program we don't want that so I'm just going to get rid of this and this as well okay so now uh, these are the two important structures like we were talking about setup which is going to be executed first and it'll just be executed once and we have after that, once that is done, like we have the loop and the statements here will be um, run in a sequence forever. And let's get started for serial communication. We have to initialize. So now I'm going to see, like say this is the program that is actually going into the Arduino Uno and then using the USB, uh, we will be communicating um, through the serial monitor. Serial monitor is the computer which is us, so I will be talking from the computer to the Arduino Uno that will hold this program, okay? So I'll have to set up the serial communication first. For that, I'll be using serial begin and 9600 and semicolon, very, very important. This is the termination operator, actually. So that is important, so once we do that, For some reason, I would like to use a tab. Um, that is something we use often in Python. And serial. And now I'm going to send how much information I've received or how much information is available in the serial buffer. And uh, this is in bytes. So I wanted to print it. Like I wanted to send this information um, back to the computer and it has to be in ASCII. ASCII is the human understandable language, so it is represented in seven bits. Uh, we also have another format like which is uh, represented um, in uh, eight bits actually, but like for now we'll just do the seven, more, seven bit ASCII. So using seven bits, we can uh, transmit like uh, a lot of uh, symbols, um, numbers and digits. So that's what we are going to do. So whatever we send here is going to be converted into ASCII and then like it will be uh, sent for us actually. So I'm going to use print ln. And what I'm going to send is the information I have, like how much bytes of information I have in my serial buffer. So serial available, and I'll do that. And that is my code. I'm going to um, program, that is, if you wanted to open this in IDE, you can do that and it is done. So now what we'll do is we will start communicating with it. So we have to start simulation and it has started. And now it is just sending, I don't have any, uh, bytes 
in my receive buffer so I don't have anything so in this case what we'll do is we will send some information and see um, that being stored and see what information we get back so I'm sending a number one so this like say it has like say one byte of information or oh, seems like it has two now three four So likewise, like what are your information until you use a read function and read that it is going to be saved. So again, here everything is uh, sent as ASCII and then it is stored. Um, so ASCII is uh, technically seven bits, but again, it's going to use an entire byte to save that information. So each digit or like each uh, information you send or like say if you have like 10 digits it's going to take like say 10 bytes actually so that is how it is it'll send uh, uh, character by character actually so that's what uh, exactly it's called it's it's not a digit or something we call it a character because everything is sent as a ASCII character so everything goes in there so I'm going to send and like say see what happens after 64 so it, because the receive buffer can hold only 64 bytes right like let's see I'm going to send something some digits as well so it is saving everything but like it is not going anymore actually so 63 and because it starts from zero and one more thing you will have to remember is when we say 64 bytes it's uh, it actually uh, gives a number somewhere between 0 to 63 actually so it starts from 0 it's not like the number system we follow we start from 1 but like here in computers like always everything starts from 0 so 0 to 63 but technically there are 64 bytes in here so we have 63 bytes of information but like whatever we send after that is not going to be stored in the receive buffer because it doesn't have any space it will be just ignored so now what we'll do is we will try to read um, the information serial information and do something with that okay so let's i'm going to well, again it freezes okay so what i will do is like um, why don't we just turn on or turn off a light bulb um, or like an LED um, using a program so let's do that and uh, maybe let's see I think I might have a question on that so here we have other digital pins so serial read is used to read uh, the incoming data as soon as you read it gets uh, erased in the serial buffer and it becomes available to store or receive more information so we have digital I.O. That's what we'll be using next. And we, there's also analog I.O. So digital I.O. We already saw a lot about read and write. So this is to read um, the input pin. Uh, so before that, like you have to use pin mode to set, the, uh, set them up as an input. And digital write, uh, you will have to set that uh, digital pin as an output. And then like you can uh, you can set it high or low and we also have analog read function so analog read function we use these pins and analog write function we use pulse width, pulse width modulation we talked about this already and you can vary the duty cycle somewhere between 2 to 255 so 0 to 100 percent so that's uh, analog write so here we have the assignment problem Come on, sorry about that. I think something is happening to the system. It is frozen. Um, okay, so let's wind up in this, Ashley. So this is how the serial communication works. So in the next step, we will solve the assignment problem. Um, so we'll try to connect a couple of LEDs and try to control that uh, using uh, the serial communication port that is available here. So see you in the next video.